Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Nancy Kavonik, and my topic today is based on the millennials and communication. I'm trying to discuss, and this is going to be uh, one of those presentations where I encourage you to uh, ask questions or make comments as we go through the presentation because I heard that if there's something that this group doesn't like, they would yell it out anyhow. So uh, feel free to do that. I'm very comfortable with the uh, dialogue with the audience, so that that's fine with me. But the purpose of the presentation today is about improving communication. S um, the focus was from the perspective of a baby boomer, but I'm looking at the audience today and I'm seeing there are probably more millennials in uh, the audience than there are on the other side of the boomers, so I'm going to do what I do best, which is use the slides, but try to have more of a dialogue based on what you want to know and how you want this presentation to uh, help you in terms of the goals that you came here today for. So let's go ahead and get started. On this first slide, the reason I have this, I'm going to read this. Every generation brings its own set of expectations to the workplace, and especially in a competitive economy, and we all, I think, can uh, acknowledge that, companies need to adapt or they're going to lose their top talent. And the reason I have this slide is because one of the bigger issues in the workplace today and why people leave is because they're not getting what they personally need. And one of the reasons is because for the first time in U.S. history, we have multiple generations in the workforce at one time. So we have a large group that are called the baby boomers, which most of you know. Those are those people that at the oldest age have just turned retirement age. But there's such a, a large um, range of years that the boomers still can be in the workforce and they're around 50-ish um, in age, they're most likely to be a millennial's boss. And therein lies the biggest problem, that the viewpoint, especially from the older boomers and the expectations from the millennials usually don't match. And so that's why we're having this discussion. So for a millennial, they're criticized for their generational values and value systems and what they expect and don't expect in the workplace. And that's really a harsh criticism that if a boomer knew more about the individual or at least about that generation, they would change the way they manage. So I'm going to ask you here, because I know there's some people that can look at these uh, words and they're saying this is like a first grade um, series of words that I can easily define. Um, staycation, pimp, tweet, frenemy. Um, somebody in the audience, please tell me one of these words uh, that, the, what's the easiest one for you to, uh, what's a staycation? Anybody know that one? <laughs> what's that? What? Work from home. A staycation, though, uh, in this term would be that you don't have any money, so instead of going to uh, Hawaii, you stay at home for your week off. So that's a staycation. That's just, you know, terminology. These are all, you know, everybody in here, uh, how many of you don't tweet? Anybody? Because what kind of conference are we at? If you didn't, you know, you would probably be a normal person, yes, and that's me paraphrasing from someone in the audience, but that would be a word that if you didn't know that and you're at this conference, you'd be at the wrong conference, basically. But if I were presenting at another conference where it's primarily uh, boomers, which I have, uh, most of them don't even, they would probably have heard the word tweet, but don't understand what it is and definitely don't do it. So someone that, um, who's here tweets a lot? Anybody? Uh, how often? Every day. If I were to take that out of your life, what would happen? It would be weird. You would, you would have to adjust. You'd have to modify your behavior. You'd have a replacement behavior, probably, something you would do. But I bet you'd be with technology. And I'm guessing that you're not going to be picking up a telephone and calling people to do that, right? How many boomers would pick up a phone, a telephone, before they pick up an electronic device to do something? And that is what we're talking about today, is the differences in generations and the use of technology, too, on communication skills. It's many times the best way to communicate is the way that the majority of the people at this conference do. But many times the people in charge 
your managers or the people at that or the top of the organization uh, that may be in positions where they have authority over uh, someone in a technical field don't see the value and it's my way or the highway and have no ability to understand why they need to change and why if they don't many times their companies will be the ones left behind okay so one thing I want to say about the different generations and um, since I am also a college professor um, this would be something I would uh, probably expect somebody to do one of those yelling things at me. Well, you said it was a Y's from this age group to this age group, and a millennial's this one, and a boomer's this one, and an X is that one. What I found is that um, even last night when I was looking um, to um, practice this presentation, and I uh, got on um, uh, Forbes.com to read a business article about communication in the generations. What I found was the years that they identified for millennials were two years off from what the other numbers that I'm currently using. So what I'd like to say is that basically when we're talking about the millennials, those are those students, I say students because those are students in college right now or, or that group that are getting ready to graduate and have been those up to those people that um, verge on being almost in their late 20s. Um, I had a person tell me that they were, uh, the terminology is on the cusp. So for instance, I'm on the cusp of, I'm not quite a boomer and I don't relate completely to the boomers, but I'm not quite um, all the way into the other one, which is like a, a X, a generation X, but um, I'm definitely more of a boomer than I am on the other side. You know, I've got some tech skills, those type of things, uh, but a person told me that they were uh, their upper 30s and trying to claim they're millennial. And it's like, that's a whole different issue because we've got people that are trying to act like they're one, <laughs> you know, they're with um, a, a group of people that their age does not match, nor does their technology skills or their perceptions based on their generation. So with this one on, what I'm trying to make the point is not the differentiation between if you are um, technically in this, it's how you behave and how you think and how you um, look at the world of work because there's other factors other than your generation on what kind of employee you are. Okay, here's uh, a slide here. If you look at these uh, pictures and they make absolutely no sense to you, chances are that you are a millennial. Um, if you look at um, the picture here of the, the female with the hair, that is something that um, if you, the late, you know, that we're at like 60s, the middle picture here, I'm trying not to move too much, uh, in the center of the screen, who knows who that is? Anybody? It's Gilligan. So, and someone said Dobie Gillis. Okay, if you said Gilligan, your generation is probably from Gilligan's Island, right? The TV show. And do you remember when do you remember seeing that show? Was it a rerun or um, okay, a rerun? But if you knew Dobie Gillis in this picture, that was before Gilligan's Island. So you probably are more the boomer generation. So, and then the other picture that you see here that says Clueless. Anybody? see that picture and relate to that um, in um, there was a more of the preppy and um, the this was a, a clueless was a TV show it was probably more of an X than a millennial or a very uh, young X type in the like late 80s 90s um, era now the keep on trucking that would be if anybody saw this one you're verging on the boomer side too because that was uh, what would a millennial say would be something that you would see on a t-shirt today that has some kind of catchphrase? Anybody? What would be a slang term that you'd see on a, a, a t-shirt today? Because I can't think of one because I'm not a millennial. You bad bro? You mad? See, I can even say it. So I'm going to take that as I have no clue what that is, but everybody else in the audience, millennial, will get that. That's what happens is that I don't get it because I don't communicate because I'm not from your same generation. 
and we have issues that way. So when we look at the boomers here in the X's, um, the Generation X, you can see, you know, I've got 65 to 77 and the boomers 46 um, to 1964. Uh, if you're an X and you're born in 65, you're going to be on the cusp and you might relate back and forth. Also, too, sometimes just because you're a person that may be um, socially integrated with a group of people from a different generation, you adapt those behaviors. And that's what happens in the workplace, too. We want you to simulate into a corporate culture. So what you want to do is to follow their norms of the company. So you learn those behaviors that are appropriate and inappropriate. Or many times you don't get promoted or sometimes you don't fit in. You would quit or you would, you know, maybe be terminated. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about the millennials here. Um, I would ask you to look at this uh, sentence at the bottom of the screen. I think this is probably higher. The average millennial sends up to 1,500 text messages a month. Do you think it's more or less than that? My assumption was that it was probably higher. How about who here texts? A month, okay, okay. And as a college professor, I ran this by a group of students, and they told me for the, they're the probably uh, this is an upper level course uh, between twenty and twenty two is the average age that many of them text a lot more than that. In fact, if you look at the environment on college campuses, when we um, what are the new rules of um, behavior in the classroom, they've changed dramatically over the last five years. But the because we have that millennial group, we have to address immediately. Corporations, since they're filtering in, they don't even see that it's an issue. So for instance, as a consultant, I would uh, work with a company to write a policy uh, for their HR department on um, access to the internet. So how many of you think, you know, in technology, Okay, um, we want to block uh, a lot of things from our employees so we, they don't shop at, you know, Target and uh, spend their day doing things like that versus doing their work. Makes sense, right? Now what do they do? Uh, what would a millennial do if they um, didn't have access on their desktop computer? What would they do if they wanted to shop at Target? Get on the phone, right? Well, Many companies don't even recognize that the devices they have, they're going to goof off more that way between texting and everything else they're doing on their handheld phone than they ever did on a laptop because it's so much easier to be discreet about it. How many of you have been in a meeting and had your phone and done all kinds of things other than pay attention to what you're supposed to be doing in that meeting? Nobody says a word. And if you're really good at it, they don't even notice that you're doing it. So I see in companies today that many times they'll say, you know, um, before the meeting starts, everybody agrees to turn the phones off. And then that one person's going to say, but I can't do that. You know, blah, blah, blah. They're too important. Which, why would you be in a meeting if you're going to distract everybody else? The most diverse generation. And this is one thing, um, if you are millennial and... I think you don't realize because when it's your generation or who you are, most times what individuals do, human nature is to make the assumption that I'm just like everybody else. That the way that I behave and think is just how most people behave and think. It's not a, a view of a generation that way. And millennials don't understand the differences that they are the next big thing for business and are already the big thing for business. For one of the reasons is the diversity in the generation. You know, we've got now have a generation that was born with technology, globalization. If you, um, how many of you had access to the internet by the time that you could use any kind of electronic device? And my generation, and I'm not going to date myself because I know this is being video recorded. I'm pretending like I'm much younger than what I really am. Or my older sister would say that she remembers black and white TV 
and no remote. And the big deal in the family was when we had a color television. And now what happens if you lose a remote? You would spend all of your time trying to find the remote versus getting up and actually manually changing a channel on a TV. And now I have a TV that you can't change a channel without the remote. So think about the difference in technology and how it impacts even the old people's lives. So they respond to some things in which they have to, but those things which they don't have to change is difficult and boomers are going to hold on to their old behaviors because it's easier for them and it makes for a very dysfunctional company. And I can guarantee you two years ago when I made presentations on generations and primarily with boomers, the attitude was they need to change and get with a program at my company, my way or no way. And now within two years, it's, it's switched focus to that we need to, in the last part of my presentation here is I'm going to give you the four tips for each side, what we need to do to make a stronger organization on how we can do those things. Because I have now offend probably boomers more than anyone else with my presentations because they have got to understand that the technology and the generational differences because of the diversity of the generation. And I'll give you some examples here based on this slide. Um, it's not just ethnicity. It's not that. That is one a factor that we have um, based on um, the complexity of the U.S. It's not the biggest thing. One of the biggest things is that this generation and one of the most positive attributes of a millennial is that they will become passionate about a cause or an issue and that will become a focus in their life and here's my example on that one is that I worked with a group of managers and it was uh, based on generations and they were boomers and one of the issues that came up just in the Q&A was that this manager was also in charge of um, an organization which it's called well I better not say the name of it sorry um, the name of the, it was a local organization in which um, you became a member and you went to lunch meetings and it was like a business club where they had presenters at lunch and they, she was in charge of recruitment and they were, uh, set a goal for, uh, to increase 24% the uh, group of uh, professional employees within one to five years within their uh, starting a position. So the, you know, primarily the millennials and could not figure out why they could not attract people to this organization. And the reason is because this is a business club which has no specific cause or purpose other than just networking. And the millennials, if they're going to spend their time doing something, they're more likely to do it based on a cause in which they believe in. Because a boomer would go to this and become part of this organization so they could list it as a something on a resume that they were members of all these professional organizations because it would help them with promotions. And a millennial, and this is a generalization about the, the millennials, which is not true or indicative of all individuals, but for the most part, that wouldn't make as much of an impact because a millennial is going to, first of all, follow their own heart. And if they are passionate about a cause, they will participate, but they're not going to just join an organization because it's going to look good on a resume. Boomers, others that are in a group uh, generations prior to that would, because that's how you got ahead in business. It was about putting those things. The primary focus of most millennials is not work one, is number one. It's a work-life balance is number one where a boomer in a professional position out of college would say that my number one goal is to get in a company and work as hard as I can and get promoted. And that's a, a major goal. Not to say that other things aren't important, um, but professionally that would be it. You would hear most millennials are going to say that when I'm ready to go great guns about my profession, I'll do that. I don't feel compelled even to do it as soon as I graduate. If I want to take a couple years off and, um, you know, find myself in terms of what I really want to do, that's what I'm going to do. And then when I'm ready, I'll, I'll get that job if I choose to do that. 
or if I want to try two or three or four or five different kinds of jobs before I get in a profession, that's okay too because it's individualized. And that's a value because you don't want to hire somebody that all they want to do is get ahead. You want to hire someone that wants to be in that position because they want to be there. And that's such a uh, good thing for millennials and for corporations, companies, you know, small business in, in the U.S. And the uh, differences here, what I'd like to just say on, on the generational differences between 20-year-olds in 70, 1976 and 2006 goes to the point that I just mentioned um, about vacations, um, about a job that they have that they have um, a job and then they have friends. A yeah, boomer, chances are they would say that I have a job and a lot of the people I work with are my friends because they spend most of their time with them. A millennial is more likely to say that I have a job and then I have my friends outside of work. That's more likely to occur. And then the prestige about the positions, and this is one too I think that we have to be very careful in making these general, generalizations about a whole, um, every millennial. I think it depends on individuals and also to um, different types of uh, professions, uh, people that are attracted to a certain field, uh, for instance, um, they are um, more of an entrepreneur than they are a person that wants to be in a stable um, organization in which they're going to have opportunities that way. So many different factors influence this, but the point of this last one is values a job most people look up to and respect is very important. That the younger you are, the less likely this, this is to occur, which means that they're more interested in doing the things that are right for them versus the things that are right for ego or prestige or power. So basically when we look at the millennials and the Ys, um, as I've noted earlier, their uh, ethnicity, different technology um, is one of the things that you can just say, if you want to just define a millennial versus any other generation, just say the word technology. Uh, grew up with computers and cell phones, globally connected. The one thing I'd like to note about that is the difference in a, uh, especially a boomer, is that if you know um, the uh, word encyclopedia, that was your internet growing up. If you wanted to know something, you had to look it up. That's the only way you're going to find out something. If you were fortunate enough to have uh, encyclopedias in your home, that's how you found out information. The next thing would be go to the library or get the information from school. We're now millennial and if you think that your technology skills are great, think about the five, six, and seven-year-olds and what they're going to do to you when you're in the workforce. So you're going to get on, you can get on the internet and find out anything. And that also not just impacts business, it impacts society. Because if you can find something out that your parents don't want you to know because they think it's morally wrong, all you got to do is get on the internet and you can find it out yourself and you don't have to wait until you hear it from someone else or find the opportunity to find it out in other ways. You can do it yourself. Uh, the volunteer attitude is, is passionate about a cause, uh, independent, and the one other criticism that millennials get, that sense of entitlement, and that comes with the difference in organizational structures. A boomer grew up with a hierarchy, which means that there are, in a, a corporation, for instance, you're going to have levels as you move up an organization. Each level is going to be based on power. So if you are in a lowest level employee, you go to your boss and you go to that boss, that boss goes to that boss and on up. What a millennial would do is, if they had a great idea, they might send an email right to the CEO of the company and think nothing is wrong with that at all. And a boomer would be ready to fire them for that. Do you get the difference? Because a boomer saying, you did not follow what you're supposed to do, which is follow the hierarchy of authority. And a person that's new to the company, worked there for you know, two years, is not supposed to make recommendations to the CEO of the company, period.
So what I want to do to summarize and to conclude is with my four tips. If you are um, looking at how to attract and retain millennials at your company, what you need to do first of all, and this is something that you would hear for any generation, but it's very important to millennials because they are very um, geared towards continual communication with others. They grew up that way. They were valued for what they knew. And they also have technical skills, which means that if you're a manager without technical skills, a millennial will have the uh, ability to know something more than you do about a job versus a boomer, when they went into a, a job position for the first time, there was no technology. So anybody that worked at that company didn't know more than their boss. And now they do. That's a huge problem because it's not fair to millennials to say, okay, now tell me what to do here. And then here, shut up and take orders because I'm your boss. It's very confusing. So with that, what we need to do is on the communication side is to, for millennials, to provide a lot of feedback with frequent encouragement and lots of engagement, which means that communicating with them and understanding where they're coming from is, is really important and valuing them for their tech skills, but also talking about what their assumption is if they know tech doesn't mean they know everything about the company or, or what needs to be done next. The next one's individualize. You need to make sure that to the point of a millennial being a person that's going to follow their passion and their cause. You need to know where they stand on those things and make opportunities available along those, those lines for them or support them in those areas. The third one is probably the most important and when I, as a consultant function on this one, explain, explain, explain. There are so many communication challenges between a boomer and a millennial, it's not funny. So, for instance, um, if I would say something, and I have a, a t three millennials that work uh, for my consulting company, I found that I've had a miscommunications even knowing this, because what I will say in terms of um, something that we're working on as a project, they don't understand the work norms. Here's an example making a phone call. I asked um, on a project, we needed to get a hold of a group of uh, managers that were high level. They were like VPs and above. And I asked the person, I said, just call them and blah, 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 blah. You know what happened? He sent them a text. No, no, excuse me. He sent them an email. And then, and I said, okay, why didn't you send them, why did you send them an email and not call them? And didn't want to tell me, you know. And then what I figured out was, first of all, this person, my millennial, it's so uncomfortable for them to make a phone call, they'd rather text or email. That's their primary means of communication. But in this situation, the people that he, I wanted him to get to talk to were upper level. So they were boomer age. They don't even read their email. Somebody else reads them for them. And for this group, it was important to do it that way. And so you have to do it situation, you have to explain why. And another situation, when I was looking at some records, I went to get a printed record, and one of my other millennials, what they did was they got the records via the computer, and they texted everybody, the people that were in those records that we need to get a hold of, and got the answers back before I even got the files out of the cabinet. Because people that were the millennials were the, the target, they are always have their phones there. She got the information back quicker than I could have done anything. And I thought I was going to be good about emailing. She sent a text. So see how the different, it, it's, you have to explain it, you have to be open to it, and you have to find out what's the best communication for the situation. And you have to explain and explain over again if it's something that relates to your company in which the millennial doesn't know. And you have to be open to the fact that you need to change if you are the person that's making the decision for the most effective thing for your company. And the last one is give them a leadership role because they're very capable. And it needs to be based on if it can't be in your company in terms of uh, they very much want to make a contribution to a company. Many times they're not in a position where it's possible. But if, for instance, if someone had um, and uh, interest in like their uh, Habitat for Humanity, you know, community service project. And to get them the skills of a manager to 
provide them with the opportunity to lead a team on a build, which, you know, the companies that I work with, a lot of them have a, they'll have a company team and they'll do a Habitat for Humanity build. This person is your um, millennial, you know, put them on that project. They'll learn how to work with a team. They'll learn how to communicate properly with a diverse group of others and they'll learn how to better project management without it being a challenge for them at the work so they can get you know pick up a skill set so in summary what i'd like to say is that even if it's generational the one thing that we need the takeaway from here is the technology that companies with millennials need to recognize what technology brings to them through people and to appreciate it versus oppose it. And then finally is that in terms of communication, regardless of generation, it was item number one. It's about the feedback and the engagement. If you want to have a better company or better communication, you need to be able to talk to people and find out what they're about and who they are, because that's the future of work, is that you have to look at people as individuals, not just as an employee. And that's been so neglected that it's, it's now creating a huge problem because of generational issues. So I'd like to thank you today uh, for attending the presentation.